Looks like we have some rain coming in. Nothing um, severe, just rain. You can see there's uh, sprinkles on the windshield, the, the specks of dirt. <laughs> this morning we're live at Anchor Island Coffee, talking about Pride Week event or Pride events. This is Pride Month. And as it is getting ready to rain, maybe, my gear is tuned in, but it's in the car still. Wait till uh, it's time to go to actually set up and do it. I don't know. Maybe we'll be inside. But this corner is interesting. This is some of the businesses here. This is Troost. Avenue which is undergoing revitalization some might say gentrification but it's better than what it was well we are alive here so let's go in mm, I've decided to try a cappuccino this morning Chili Kelly's, it sounds really, really good. Chili Kelly's. The rain has caught up with us. I was hoping to take the donkeys for a walk. It'll probably peter out here. I don't know. It might be steady all day. Hmm. We got rain. Rain. Come on, dogs. Come on, Stel. Today we're braving the raindrops, trying out a place I haven't been to in a while. Wagon Trail here in North Kansas City. Come on, doggies. This park is good because you can get your exercise with your doggy. We will handy dandy trail when it's not blazing ass hot out here. But they also have the water and everything set up too. Are you pooped? Poop pups? Hmm? So I think they're ready to go. Hmm. North Kansas City, Missouri. This town didn't exist, I think, before the 1920s. And 
I could be wrong, but I think it was pretty much founded as sort of a blue-collar working town around the uh, railroad yards and, uh, what is it, swift trucking and armor meat packing. And uh, this street, cross street here is armor. And we are on, <laughs> what's the street we're on? We're on Swift, Armor and Swift. And uh, then the main street, one of the other main streets going north-south is called Burlington. Although, uh, I think to everyone else it's known as Oak Street. It's also the... Uh, the way the Jefferson Highway came through and, and sort of uh, and it zigzagged through here actually well for the most part it was straight this actually this is the Jefferson Highway and then it crossed over on 14th Street and uh, I'll just give a little tour and if uh, you're hearing a, it sounds like a, a steam engine there's a there's ghost engines all around operating steam like in the 1920s. No, actually it's Jimmy here panting and sharing his uh, bad breath with me. Right, Jimothy? You know, diabetes is rough on a dog. Rough, rough. And he uh, doesn't take him long to get winded overheated, even though today is a pretty temperate day, it's, uh, it says 75, but, you know, even at that, when the sun comes out, it, it, uh, burns you, bakes you, and, uh, the, uh, sun is coming in and out between the clouds, and the humidity is high, all right, this is where Jefferson Highway would make its turn. I wish the city would mark the highway somehow, some way, and uh, take advantage of the uh, tourist opportunity. And then um, the highway would make a left here at Burlington, which we won't. And, um, you know. The, one of the three industries this town was founded on. Burlington is named after the Burlington Northern Railroad. Or Burlington Railroad, sorry. Uh, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy was its name. And then it merged with uh, the Great Northern, became known as Burlington Northern. Great Northern was a great railroad out of, transcontinental railroad out of Minnesota, Minneapolis. And then um, eventually it merged with the Santa Fe and became BNSF or Burlington Northern Santa Fe. And there's still a lot of uh, industry, very industrial town, and it's it's kind of divided industrial, and then it has its residential area. My arm hurts. Wah. As residential areas are pretty much, pretty much like what you would expect a blue-collar residential area to look like. And one thing that's remarkable about this town is uh, it started a little bar, entertainment district slash music scene, and just a little kick in the right direction and it might turn into like something that might be better than Westport and uh, what would be great is if you could have Westport without the problems now we're back on armor and we're crossing over Swift and this is the main street obviously downtown shopping area and uh, it's a pretty uh, pretty cute little town 
Uh, it's North Kansas City. It's not Kansas City. Um, it's its own town. My arm hurts. Wah. And, uh, The um, thing about this town is it's not really big either. It seems like it's a bigger metro, but I think the population is, I could be wrong, but I think the population is somewhere around 5,000. I don't know, I'd have to look that up. Why do you say things if you don't know me? For a long time, it was 5,000. It could be higher. There's City Hall. There's a neat little, uh, no, uh, it's kind of like a splash park. It's free, too. Kids love to go there. Here's the residential area. This little place right here. It's like a little coffee shop or whatever. The little store on Knox. I'm going to have to try it. in there once before but not to sit and enjoy so I'm going to do that sometime well the audio is coming across on this I um, was using my uh, my switcher and my phone but I forget that it tends to overheat the phone especially when the phone is uh, and now I can try it Especially when the phone is uh, on the dash. Let me try this again. But uh, yeah, it frustrates me because what it does is it doesn't put an end of file marker if you're familiar with that computer term. It used to haunt me all the time when I was in the Air Force. No end of file marker is like you just put a whole lot of work into something and then the computer shuts off without shutting down and then properly and you don't uh, save your work and all your work is gone like you never did it so you have to start over and uh, I used to be really good at that it was very frustrating because I might work on a project for a week and then one day the thing would shut down there'd be no no file it would be a no end of file marker, which means that week's worth of work would be kaput. I guess I should learn how to just stop and start a couple of times so I don't lose all of it, but I, you forget. Anyway, that's one um, beef I have with Top Director. It needs to be able to um, have some sort of emergency backup, like more sophisticated programs do these days to where when your phone quits because it overheats it'll save its uh, save the project for you or at least give you a um, a backup file you can pull down even if you only lose just a little bit of your work it's better than losing everything but hmm So, in addition to the uh, the steam engine sound you're hearing from the dog, you're hearing a jet engine sound, which is the car's air conditioner. And I hope it's not blowing straight into my mic, or it'll sound like I'm in a wind tunnel. Uh, 
anyway, we're back on the Jefferson Highway, and we're going to kind of follow it a little into a uh, crossover from North Kansas City into Kansas City. And a lot of people get confused. They, um, there's Kansas City, Missouri, which is south of the river and north of the river because they annexed a lot of land up north back when uh, poverty rates were climbing in the city as uh, landlords were, slumlords were taking over everything and people were moving out of the city. And the only thing that was left in the city was people who didn't have much money to pay taxes with. Then you have North Kansas City, which is its own town. We just crossed out of North Kansas City. When you cross over the levee, you're crossed out of North Kansas City. We're now in Kansas City, Missouri, which is the Northland part of Kansas City, which everybody refers to as Kansas City North. You have North Kansas City, which is its own town, and then Kansas City North. I stopped this spiel to talk about this little area right here at the Jefferson Highway. This is very beautiful with the way the trees come over. It's a nice shady drive in the fall. It's beautiful in the spring. It's spectacular in the summer. It's great because, you know, when it's blazing hot outside, you have the archway of the trees to kind of shade you. But anyway, to get back to what I was saying, so a lot of people are very confused. In addition to the fact that there's Kansas City, Missouri, and there's a town called North Kansas City, Missouri. And then there's a town called Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas also didn't exist before, what, 1900 or so? Maybe even later than that. Kansas City, Kansas was formed from a whole bunch of little towns that kind of conglomerated together. Like, I know Wyandotte was one of the towns. Turner, um... What are some of the Argentine, Rosedale, uh, Quindaro? They all decided to become like a super group of rock stars, but a super group of not so great rock stars. <laughs> and uh, they formed Kansas City, Kansas, Wyandotte County. Kansas City, Missouri was first. And all my English relatives get very confused. They say, here's our son and daughter from Kansas. Or here's, here's our relatives from Kansas. My granddad used to say, here's my grandson, my daughter from Kansas. And we correct him every time. So no, we're from Missouri. Until we got tired of saying it. And they said, uh, whatever. All right, I'm going to hit stop and start to save this work. So like I say, this is Kansas City, Missouri. This is North Oak. This is the Jefferson Highway, an old highway that existed back before they started numbering the highways. Um, they, they gave them names, and they called them auto trails. And it was part of the Good Roads Movement, which was actually started in the 1870s by people who rode bikes. Because the, the uh, hobby of bike riding, bicycle riding, was uh, becoming very popular in the cities in the era before automobiles. But you would get to the, the city limits and all the roads would disappear and all that was left were the farm roads which were essentially um, dirt roads or worse, mud tracks, trails. So they started the Good Roads Movement, and when the automobiles came along, uh, it took over, and um, people got real tired of getting to the edge of the city and finding that the only way uh, a road was, um, was decent or taken care of was if the, the local farmers were doing it, because they had to get their goods to the market, and they would... They would do this uh, thing called McAdam, which is essentially a gravel road. 
and that's about the best a road would get and if the farmers didn't really care about it then you you had hardly anything you, you might not even have roads because the farm a lot of farms would just go right up their fence line would go right up to the property line and then the next property would begin so there was a great uh, desire to petition the federal government to take it over standardize what a good road should be what a nice travelable road should be and you know for commercial purposes but the way they justified it especially around World War One, was that they said look it over at Europe um, they've had good roads since the Roman Empire and armies use those roads to march back and forth and we're at a real disadvantage if we got attacked because our military wouldn't be able to get to respond very well because there'd be no roads to go over but at the most they would have railroads so at about what 1912 or so 13 uh, auto trails auto trail association started up and Kansas City is one of Kansas City's auto, auto trails north south auto trail was the Jefferson Highway named after Thomas Jefferson the president second president of the United States second third yeah it was Washington then Adams and Jefferson um, but it, this road which incidentally is a considered an international road went from Winnipeg Canada to New Orleans Louisiana or Pine to Palm was its uh, moniker um, and it ran right through Kansas City actually it split north of Kansas City um, north of Smithville uh, it's slipping my mind right now and then it split in Kansas City there's a route that went west through Kansas and there's a route that went east through Missouri and the eastern branch uh, went all the way down to uh, about where Route 66 starts um, and and then it headed west into Oklahoma and reunified with um, the north northern branch of the or the western branch of the Jefferson Highway that ran through Kansas um, in Kansas so it's kind of like Kansas City's Route 66 but pre-66 and it's you know it's an older route didn't last very long uh, roughly about nine ten years and that's uh, probably why a lot of people haven't heard of it however the Jefferson Highway Association has been it was formed in the in the shadow of the Route 66 Association with the same idea in mind promote tourism and interest in local history and culture uh, big pothole and uh, so they've really been ramping it up and kicking it into gear and doing a really good job of promoting Jefferson Highway their their web page or their uh, their Facebook page is tremendous I think their web page is pretty good too they've got it pretty well mapped out so you can follow it if you want and um, so yeah I, I I'm they're starting to try and get a lot of local businesses interested in promoting it as well and uh, you know I'd like to make that appeal to some of the local businesses that I know that are on the route to get some stickers and put them in your doors at least and maybe get some of the flyers and put them make them available for people to if they ask about it there it is you know there's the information but also um, one of the big sticking points and um, Route 66 Association has had to fight with this as well, especially in Missouri. Is uh, state um, state highway agencies like MoDOT have been very uh, unhelpful because 
I think they don't like the liability and their budgets have been really tight. Uh, Iowa has done a great job with their, their highways. So they've got them all marked. They've got points of interest put out. They've got information and maps and everything. But Missouri is like, there's a for instance, if you put up a sign that's on close to, uh, close to the roadway, MoDOT will come and take it down or make you take it down. They might even take you to court over it because they say it confuses travelers. They don't want any, what do they call it, competing signage. Now, uh, Missouri is unique with their Route 66 signage in that we have the, uh, the blue Missouri Route 66 signs. But when it comes to Jefferson Highway, there's been some trouble. And it's, it's kind of a shame. It's, uh, you know, it, it kind of goes back to the, the days of when the government didn't want to have anything to do with anything. And it was up to farmers to maintain the roads or not. So, well, I'm hoping this will hold out. I'm coming up to the intersection where I'm going to turn off. And uh, so I'm going to hit stop right up here. So, woohoo!